I'm doing, what I'm doing right now is a gram of naphthol and a gram of resorcinol so that um, we can go faster. I gotta get the gloves on. Whoa, 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 you're wearing gloves today? Definitely. <laughs> Not only does this stain all your clothes, it also stains your skin. Yeah. It stains everything. It's like everything stains today. We are making it die after all. Synthetic dyes are made to dye things a permanent color or semi permanent. Okay, resource and all on this side, naphthol on this side. And naphthol hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide. Check it out, guys. Glove and goggle. We're getting serious today. Oh, I don't have my goggles on. <laughs> you have glasses, I guess. So. I'll be right back. I need my goggles on. <laughs> this is a seriously. Yeah, you know it's pretty bad with hand work gloves today. <laughs> Today is the lab you never wear your nice clothes to. So we've added 50 milliliters of sodium hydroxide to these two different phenol type compounds. I have two naphthol, the one in the procedures. Professor Mort is using resorcinol, which is another type of phenol. <laughs> I'm, theor I'm theorizing it'll work. Oh, it'll definitely work because phenols activate bonding sites for electrophilic aromatic substitution. <clears throat> So this is the easy part, making up the phenol. The hard part though, is trying to get it to dissolve. The source and all dissolves better because it's more polar. Naphthol does not, so I'm just gonna let this soak. But I wanna mention that we, uh, the hydroxide will deprotonate it, making it more polar to make it soluble, more soluble. Yeah, but that one has more to yeah. deprotonate. So it, it actually does better. Okay, so I'm taking these guys away. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to tie up our tie-dye cloths any way we want. I'll give Professor Moore his swath of cheesecloth. Yep, so the cheesecloth, for the that don't know, it's like using some, some baking procedures, typically for proofing bread and stuff. And you, you can use it for filtering as well. But yeah, it's just from out the grocery store, cheesecloth. So when you tie-dye, you're basically going to wrap rubber bands over sections of it randomly so you can, yeah. you right can there. fold it to try to create repeating patterns going through or you can just make it random um, i've already folded this in half once and then you just make it really tight and everywhere you put on the rubber band tightly will not have a chance for the chemicals to affix and change that part of the Cheese cloth. Usually, this part we have to do is you know make whatever pattern you can. Yeah, and I'm just going to. I kind of just twist it around in there and get a pattern that way. Now I'm going to do one more because I'm going to show you another way to do tie dyeing. Um, and this one, I'm just going to put a couple little pieces and leave my tie dye more or less flat. I've seen this done at my daughter's grade school. So for both of these, we're going to soak them into our respective phenol hydroxide for a minute or so. And we just need to let them soak really well. And I'm kind of poking it around. Let's see. I'm trying to keep this little part out for mine. I'm going to keep it white. Yeah, if you do not get put naphthoxide oxide into the cheesecloth, it won't activate it. And it won't be able to create the bond because the instant our uh, diazonium compound comes in contact with these, it'll instantly change colors. We'll show you that in a second. So I'm just going to let this one soak while I, I prepare the other part. Oh, this looks on camera. So we're going to make a diazonium and we're going to do a diazonium coupling. So we'll both need an ice bath because if this goes over five degrees, um, it will decompose spontaneously and won't work as well. So the next half of the reaction is to do an ice bath. So what we need is about a gram, or we're each going to do about a gram of the 4-nitroaniline, or the also known as paranitroaniline. Put it into another beaker. Is that the white powder? Looks like a well, yellow-brown yellow powder. You know, it, what's going to happen is when we finish dissolving, it kind of looks like a pukey yellow 
Okay, that one's almost perfectly drained. So we're going to put this one, put it into the ice bath. And again, we're not doing stoichiometry this week on this one. And you're going to add the water, which I just poured over here. And then 20 drops of concentrated hydrochloric acid. Hold your breath. <laughs> All right, so just pour some water in here and then the drops of acid. It needs about one milliliter and then you need to ice it. So it needs to be ice cold before we actually turn the aniline into a diazonium. Normally we use uh, a fume hood for the concentrated HCL, but we're doing it out here for the sake of the video. Yeah, this is not safe today. <laughs> Twenty ish. Twenty one, but yeah. Ice it now. Stir it around. Try to create a slurry. Yep. So uh, this stuff's not going to fully dissolve. You definitely want it in a slurry for when you dip your uh, cloth into it. Still recording. We're still recording. <laughs> Come on in. We're... Dr. Garner here to make a cameo. We are almost out of this. <laughs> I'm not even sure. We should have had Dr. Garner pull up a piece of cheese puff. Quickly pull up a piece of cheese puff. <laughs> Where is it? It's um, right here. Uh, we have more over here. Okay, so the ingredient that changes the aniline, which is in here, into a diazonium is the sodium nitrite. We're going to use excess, so it's about a gram is what the procedures say. For those that are in my class, that's the Hono reagent. It's, for those in my class, <laughs> if you ever write Hono, you get a point taken off. What? <laughs> It reacts with the acid and make Hono. Okay, yeah, it makes nitrous acid. Nitrous acid itself is Hono. unstable, so. Exactly. <laughs> when you're doing synthesis on a test or quiz, you have to make the nitrous acid in situ because you cannot store it in a bottle. It spontaneously decomposes itself. Yeah, so I just want to mention, yeah, for those that are in my class, if I write Hono, I'm implying that it's sodium nitrates and, and hydro acid. hydrochloric acid yeah. have been used. Because it, it cannot exist by itself. That's why I don't like people just jump into the whole no conclusion. Yeah, mine's kind of a sludge now. It looks like kind of like rotten mustard or something. I'm trying to get a description so you can't see it. Yeah, it is kind of a mustard color. Okay, so we're going to... Ready? Start stirring that around. Let me get it so I can see it better. Next stage, I'm going to have Professor Garner soak his into this, but you're going to take your tie dye that you've been soaking in your naphtha oxide or your resorcinol lanion. You're going to pull it out, take it over, and this is another reason you gloves on. You need to squeeze it as tight as you can to remove as much of the excess liquid as possible. And I'll pass. Let me show them on here. So it's kind of like squeezing a tea bag. So you just squeeze the liquid out. You don't want too much liquid on it. And actually, you definitely want after us. we squeeze it out, the next person can use the solution to do their tie dye. And I actually recommend putting this on a paper towel and squeezing it even more. Yeah. And we have no idea if mine's going to work or not. I'm thinking it's going to work. It, it'll work. It'll make something. We don't know it's what it's going to do. Other, we just don't know what color. Go ahead. I don't think it's going to explode. So soak that for a minute. You won't have any cool explosions. Okay. So now, I pulled my first one out. I put it in a paper towel. And I'm going to squeeze even more of the liquid out if I can. And as much of the liquid you want out as possible. Okay, 
what happens is, as you'll see, and I'm going to just dip it in and touch it, the instant this naphthoxide touches this diazonium that I made in here, it instantaneously turns blood red. Hold both the ice bath and the beaker <laughs> and drop my thing in there. This is really better when you're just doing it on the countertop. Okay, so everything has kind of turned a blood red color. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk over to the sink now and pull it out of this beaker and drop it into the sink. Because the next thing we have to do is let it, is let it sit for a minute and then rinse it off completely. Okay. I'm going to show you guys mine now. I don't know. And then we're going to let Professor Gardner. Go yeah, let's see what mine. Yeah, let's do mine real quick. Okay, goes. let's see what color it goes. Because you have a different aromatic, it should change to a different color. Ooh, Ooh. look at that. It's like a bluish purple almost. You made a blue purple. That's pretty cool. Look at that. <laughs> purple. So that means, okay, so the red color here is because we're absorbing, we have enough pi bonds to absorb in the green wavelength. His is only absorbing in the orange, yeah, orange see. yellow, so it's not. You can actually see it better in the paper towel right here where I got out of the paper towel. Yeah, well, when we rinse it out and unfold yeah. it, you'll actually see the purple color more. That's oh, pretty nice. cool. All right, let this sit out and then, Dr. Garner. Okay, that's good. Okay, so for the, my last experiment, experiment. Okay. I'm going to take the resorcinol solution that Professor Amor made, and I'm going to drizzle in a random pattern on top of this, of my other tie dye one, which I need to soak in the oxide or it won't work. So now we're gonna take the diazonium compound and I'm just gonna drizzle some on. And you will just see what happened. Over 10 we're painting. And this is another way to do tie dyes. Just pour some on randomly, and then see. It looks like resorcinol is winning. <laughs> okay, so it's now time for the sink. See a little red there. Yeah, that's red the resorcinol knocked out the naphtha oxide. Okay, it is time for the rinsing and the show and tell. So I'm going to turn on the ultra pure water. And the idea is the dyes are going to bleed. You see the bleeding dye, and but some of it's going to be affixed permanently to my cloth, and it's going to create a pattern based on my rubber bands. And this one I did a drizzle effect, so it'll also have a drizzle pattern. You start to unfold and unravel and you look at what kind of pattern you made yeah, and that. then oh i have an interesting pattern especially here in the middle you're supposed to oh and there's the red showing up <laughs> interesting does that yellow ever come out or um that, there's a little bit yellow left behind it usually does if you wash it so i'm going to squeeze it one more time and then we always set this between paper towels and this is where the students are to take the psych exam and tell me what you see in there. <laughs> I see a bird. The ink blot test, right? <laughs> it's an ink blot test. You see a bird, you see an army, do you see a I've... soldier, do you see a ghost. And the thing about ink blot tests, you can look at the dark stuff or you can look at the white pattern and see what you see in the white. Like that looks like a kitty cat. I see a face. Everybody <laughs> sees a face. <laughs> okay, so. Go ahead and do yours, Professor Ramor. Yours is the purple one. Oh, nice purple. Okay, soak it really good and squeeze it really hard. There you go. Nice Ooh. purple color. Looks like permanganate. Yeah, but it's not. It's a synthetic dye. What are the resources and all gives us that brown, yellow? Yeah, well, I've noticed that um, the the two napple does that too. Yeah, it looks kind of brown now. 
doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah it didn't. It didn't retain all its purple color. But look at the pattern he created up here. Oh, yeah, that is pretty. Do you see it on it the camera? It almost made a butterfly-like pattern. Yeah. It's like a palm tree, maybe? Yeah. Whatever. I see trees and faces. He sees whatever. <laughs> I see whatever you want to see. They're learning our psyche now. They're going to analyze this video. <laughs> all right. Okay. Paper towel? Yep. Put a little paper towel yep. Then you can film Professor Garner. All right, let me uh, dry my hands real quick and then I'll. All right. Yeah, well, that's the red. The red stays red. Yeah. Um, the Alizarian red. So we tried to create a purple. Yeah, which I have it some red in it. Turned brown. It turned brown. Interesting. I wonder if that's because we source no react with the air. Enough Could be. Yeah, well, soak it one more time, squeeze it really hard, and then spread it out and see what you mean. What we got here? So it looks like you got a lonely hiker in the middle of the snow. <laughs> well, the lonely hiker. Let me see this lonely hiker. He's right there. He's hiking on the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's what I see. Then there's also this cool white pattern. I don't know what you would call that. Want to dry the top of it here? Yeah, go ahead. You can take it home. Hang it up on the wall. Hang it up on the wall. Frame it. They make a dream catcher, right? Yep. This is the one with the Alizarian red, not the, or sorry, the two naphtho. What you guys see, all depends how you hold it. <laughs> That looks like a face when I hold it that way. All right, everybody, here's the final. They're mostly dry, I guess. Uh, this one was mine. The purple turned brown, unfortunately. Uh, this one was uh, Professor Hammond, so he did this one and this one. This is the only type that you tried the drip technique. So you see the both dyes in there a little bit. And then this one in the end here is Dr. Garner's that he did. Oh, he has a spaceship picking up his hiker. The spaceship picking up the hiker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm flip it over. See what it looks like when they say. Yeah. No, it's Africa. It's, uh, it's, it's <laughs>